Today is our January 8th, 2012, about 1.15 in the afternoon. We are at the north end of Great Guana Key, Shell Island over there. We have Camela Mickey over here, and towards the back of us, the northern tip of Great Guana Key, and you can see the flag flying there. That is one of the holes for the Baker's Bay Golf Course. I think it is the eighth hole, but I'm not absolutely certain. I'm going to pan around over here. You see another green over here. And there is, a, I think they call it the comfort station over there where they have drinks set up for the folks that are playing golf. In 2004, when this plan first came to fruition, when we first heard about it, about building a golf course here, Save Guanaki Reef was formed because we were very concerned about the possibility of fertilizers entering the water and causing algae blooms which in turn would kill or destroy coral. Um, at that time, um, Baker's Bay came back with a huge marketing scheme and told us that there was no possible way that fertilizer could enter the water because of the way they were going to design the course. They claimed that they would slope the course inward so that any nutrients would flow towards the center where they would be saved and then recycled for water in the grass. They claimed there would be a buffer zone between the greens and the ocean. They also claimed that the grass they were using required very little fertilizer in any event and therefore there would be no impact on the marine environment. The reason why we're so concerned about fertilizer is fertilizer makes algae grow and algae smothers coral. So we're just going to take a quick look, walk up here, take a look at this green. As you can see, it's beautiful grassy dune. Uh, at this time, I'm kind of sort of trespassing, but uh, Livingston Marshall at the Abaco Science Alliance Conference told us that uh, he'd like everyone to come and see how well the development is doing, and I'm sort of taking him up on this offer. All right, so uh, we can clearly see this is Baker's Bay Golf Course. This is the northern tip of Great Guana Key, and we take a look down here on the ocean side. We're on a very low tide right now, so we can look as we go down into the water. And we've had some scientists here and they have looked at the algae that is present here. Some beautiful red and green algae. Uh, algae also likes fertilizer and that makes it grow. And it's strange to note that right here, right off of the golf course, there is an abundance of red and green algae that seems to be doing very, very well. We went around the entire island. This is the only place we found concentrations of algae this thick. Even in the marina where you would think there'd be lots of nutrients, there is absolutely none of this red and green algae growing. We're on a very low tide. Actually, low tide was about half an hour ago, so a lot of it is out of water now. But you can see the bright reds and the bright greens. And this particular algae, Dr. Garo probably will go over with you exactly what this algae is called but he described it as what he called a sewer pipe algae and this algae is usually found right where a sewer pipe if you were pumping raw sewage into the water this is the algae that would be growing there so there's definitely some fertilizer nutrient input here and you can see the bright bright green colors and also you see the bright bright red those are another type of algae that has phosphates and looking at this algae here you go there's a little clump of it I'm not really a scientist, so I can't tell you exactly what it is, but I can tell you that uh, the scientists that have looked at it say it's not good. And the fact that it's so healthy here in this particular spot and no place else leads us to believe that fertilizer is leaking from that golf course, which is right there. Okay, so uh, we showed this to Dr. Livingston Marshall at the Abaco Science Alliance Conference the other day, and his thoughts were that we were taking this footage from someplace else and it couldn't possibly be there so again let me pan around you can see the algae and you can see the golf course and in a minute I'm gonna take the boat about a five minute ride away to the ocean side and I'm also gonna take it over to the bay side and we're gonna look in a similar topography and see if we have this same type of fertilizer runoff present and therefore the same algae and you will find because I've been unchecked the last three or four days, there is none. So I want to get a little bit closer look at this algae and Mr. Garo, Tom Garo, head of the Global Coral Reef Alliance is going to narrate what kind of algae we're looking at and why it's here in such large proportions. 
So I'm going into the case now because I'm going to put the camera in the water. Okay, here we are at a different area. This is also at the north end of Baker's Bay, not close to any greens. And this is even in a more protected area, so you'd expect more algae to be growing here. And look at the difference. You can clearly see none of the green is present here at all. And no bright red clumps. Nothing. So you do the comparison. Okay, this area here is free of nutrients. A similar type, regular type vegetation that you find in areas like this before they're denuded of uh, all the plants. And you can see very clearly that the rocks here are a lot cleaner. There's a little bit of algae over there, but the color is a lot less. and there's definitely a lot less of it. 